uptown, part of West End and South End. Um, and part of what they do is really cool placemaking projects like this. One of the things that really helped this is, and you can see right here, this is the connection for emergency vehicles to get back to the street. So, um, this is the Common Market South End location. Uh, and let's see if you can see it from here exactly. The Common Market's original location is in Plaza Midwood. Second location was just that way in the base of one of the buildings that we looked at. Um, and so when that building was torn down, they looked for a new location. This group of warehouse buildings along here on both sides of the street um, was kind of the spot that they found. So um, these are some photos to kind of show what this building looked like um, before we started. So it was a, just a, a metal building. We pulled the skin off here, which is what you're, you're seeing here. That's still the same garage roll-up door and canopy, so kind of kept, um, you know, as much as the building as possible. You see a little bit of the metal there that's left. And then all the gray metal you see, we built back. Uh, and so this is the outdoor patio. Uh, it's very lively patio. Uh, it's also one of the best beer selections in town. It's basically a convenience store with a bar. Uh, and good sandwiches. And, and deli, yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, and it kind of goes back into uh, this warehouse building. So it's a, it's a bigger than it looks. Uh, but the idea is that you can sit anywhere in the convenience store, hang out. Um, so we can peek in, but this shows you kind of what it looked like yeah. before and after. Fantastic. Uh, and this kind of shows a little bit of kind of where we pull things back and added the shipping containers. Um, which if you guys want to fantastic yeah pass, pass these around, around. Be interested yep there you go uh, uh since this was a former industrial property were, are there brownfield properties here is that a concern for financing um there are for sure a lot of these buildings is one of the reasons they have minimal transformations and not a new building is a, a don't positive move, don't move soil around right yeah yep. Yep. and a lot of these uh, this particular building, there are some changes. We, you know, took some things away. There's a canopy added here. Uh, so there's a maybe 10% of the building you can change before some of that stuff kicks okay. in. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There's also some really cool covered bike parking kind of on the side here that's really space efficient. It's a nice vertical rack. Yeah. And almost everything here was, is a found piece of equipment. All the shelving, all the coolers, everything. So all these are found bike racks yeah. <laughs> that we kind of put together. Uh, in Charlotte, there's short-term bike parking and long-term bike parking. Long-term bike parking has to be covered. It's for folks working or their bikes are going to be there for a while. And so this satisfies long-term and short-term because we have a covering over, over parking. Kevin's being modest about this. This was a really, really big deal for the bike community when, when Common Market South End came back because historically Common Market has been a a cultural epicenter for the bike scene in Charlotte and um, the original Common Market South End did bike in movie nights. It's where folks were talking about how to build a bike network before the city was doing that work. Um, and so when when the Common Market site was sold in South End, it was a pretty big deal in the bike community and to have someone like Kevin who's a part of that community bring it back to this location in this way was really, really cool. Um, and he's too modest to tell you that himself. So, <laughs> uh, from here we will head back up Camden Street, um, which is the street I mentioned is is now more of the primary bike commuting route it's north through South cool, End. Um, we'll make our way density, over to Mint Street and then head back into Uptown around the um, Bank of America Stadium, where Charlotte FC and the Carolina Panthers play, um, and we'll probably gather up again somewhere around there. We had a, a transit-oriented wedding. We got married at a church in Uptown, and then everybody got on a light rail and rode it here. 
to uh, what was then the Trolley Museum and is now the Urban Design Center and had our wedding reception. Yeah. Back in Uptown now, we just went under I-277 there. This is the Legacy Union building, which is now the corporate headquarters for Honeywell. This is also a future segment of the Uptown Cycle Link. The Uptown Cycle Link is a network of separated bike lanes that the city is currently designing. About three miles of that infrastructure is on the ground. It's about a seven mile system in total. We'll get to ride a big stretch of that at the end of the ride today. Um, but the cycle link, when it's built, will be in the, the lane nearest us. So this will be a road diet with a two-way cycle track. Um, and it connects to something I wanted to point out up here. So on the other side of that concrete retaining wall um, is some property that the city purchased when this redevelopment came in uh, for the Legacy Union building. And that will be a ramp that then carries the cycle link, uh, the southern leg of that separated bike infrastructure, back up to Church Street and eventually I'll cross to the convention center. Um, and it'll connect, you'll see in a minute, to the Greenway system that is on the west side of Uptown here, the Irwin Stewart Creek Greenway system. So um, for those who maybe don't know, Charlotte's a little bit weird, we call our downtown Uptown. Uh, the big reason for that is that Uptown sits on a ridge in between two creeks. Then we've got two really great Greenway systems um, along both of those creeks. But until recently, there wasn't a way to get in between uh, or into Uptown from those Greenway systems. And so that, that's what the Uptown Cycle Link is doing for us. It's connecting those Greenway systems. It's transforming what was primarily just a recreational infrastructure into now something that folks can use to commute into and, and out of Uptown. Um, this is also a, a state road, believe it or not. Uh, NCDOT owns and maintains a lot of the roadways in the city of Charlotte. Uh, in order to do the two-way cycle track on this road, the city is planning to take it over from the state so the, the city can develop it, uh, that street section, in a way that meets their standards but might not jive with the state standards. Um, that's obviously something that's much easier said than done because you have to chase back the highway route signage um, way, way outside of uptown. So all that is happening to support this segment of a, a separated bike facility. Um, and it, I think it demonstrates the commitment that the city's had recently to, to do that kind of work. We're now on the Wesley Heights Greenway connector going over towards Irwin Creek Greenway. Um, that little wiggle that you just did is a wiggle that all the bike commuters kind of on the west side of town going into uptown have to do every day. Um, it's This is my bike commute in and out of town. The, the uptown cycle link when it's built um, will improve some of that and, and have a bicycle sort of bypass <laughs> from the handicap uh, accessible ramps there um, to make that a little bit more comfortable as the primary biking corridor. Um, there aren't that many crossings of this uh, railroad tracks between uptown and, uh, and the west side. So this is a really, really important bike commuting corridor. Um, we're also going to see, as we go through here, a development called the Foundry, which sits kind of right here on Cedar Street and the intersection of the Greenway. Um, there's a front porch there for a bar that's a big tailgate spot, but um, that's become a, a really cool kind of retail and restaurant location on this bikeway network. It has become a cool sort of neighborhood center on this, this side of the track. So you'll see that as we go by, and then we're going to continue on um, 
through the west side neighborhoods on the Irwin Creek Greenway, um, and we'll find a nice shady spot to gather again somewhere out that way. Oh, sorry, yeah. I live two blocks from here, right up there. So it's um, it's not a very heroic thing. It's very easy. It's mostly Greenway and then low-stress streets in Uptown. Um, but we part of the reason we chose to be where we are is because we've got three young kids, but we can live in this neighborhood and still be a one-car family. Um, we can both bike commute in. We can bring the girls into school on a, on a bike trailer. So. Um, there's not as many places as, as I would like for there to be in Charlotte where you can have that kind of car light lifestyle, but this is, this is definitely one of them. Um, this is the Wesley Heights neighborhood. Uh, it's one of the historic neighborhoods in Charlotte. Um, I think we've got seven or eight historic districts that have um, local historic protections on them. Um, this greenway sits on a Duke utility corridor and one of the original streetcar lines for Charlotte. Um, I was just saying as folks were pulling up, this is one of the few streetcar lines that the tracks still exist. Most of the tracks have been pulled up around town, but these tracks are still here. Do you know, Kevin, what it's what the line is called? Does it have a name? Uh, Lakewood Trolley. What? Lakewood Trolley. That's it. Thank yep. you, Max. Yep. So Lakewood is a neighborhood out west that used to be served by the streetcar. Yep. A lake and amusement park, right? Yeah. And there's a commercial street parallel, right, where most of the restaurants and stuff in this neighborhood are. That's right. So we, we rode for one block on Moorhead Street before we came up to the stadium. Once Moorhead Street goes past I-77, which we just crossed underneath, it turns into a bit more of a neighborhood um, retail type of environment, and that's, that's on the south side of the neighborhood. Yep. We're heading toward Little Sugar Creek Trail then, right? Uh, that's the west side of Uptown. We're heading towards Irwin Creek. Okay. Because yep. I had read that they just approved $110 million for the next five years on that trail. And it was some state money and some city money. Would getting that through council of both state and city be difficult? $110 million, million is a lot of money for a single trail. So I know the, the Cross Charlotte Trail bond program for the city was an $114 million investment. I don't think that's recent, though. I think that was, at, if there was a recent $110 million funding allocation, I feel like... You would have heard about it. I feel like I would. Yeah. If not, you're giving me the best news I've heard in a okay. long time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so money's hard to come by here, too. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say that I felt really blessed during my time at the city of Charlotte to be working in a growing city that had bond capacity to do a lot of cool stuff yeah. and political support to do it. I mean, there, I know there's a lot of towns that are trying to build out bond infra or bike infrastructure, but that don't have regular bond support. So Dave, Dave's job is to manage that program for the city. So he, he has all the answers on that. But there, the city cranks out bonds like clockwork every two years to fund sidewalks and bikeways and greenways. Uh, we have never had a street improvements bond fail in Charlotte. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> he did knock on wood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I didn't know where you wanted to stop. Is this a good as this any? This is good. Yep. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So this is Lower Tuck. Uh, Tuckasegee is uh, is the street that kind of runs through this neighborhood. So that's the reason for Lower Tuck. These are also warehouse buildings that have been converted. Um, so uh, these entrances and all this stuff is um, kind of shell and, and not everything's full yet. But across from us here behind the green fence, that corner of that building is one of Cluck's projects. It's a restaurant that is just starting construction now. Um, originally, we designed a roof terrace to go from that corner of the building to this, but um, construction costs are not going to allow that to happen. But this is, you can kind of see a rendering of the exterior and the floor plan behind that. And then uh, this kind of shows more of the interior. Uh, one thing that's unique about this project is we're using all natural materials, so there's almost no paint. So like the back bar is all terracotta, um, a lot of terracotta. And they'll have a front patio, so there'll be a front patio with a roof on the corner there. You can't tell right now, but there are really awesome views from that building of the skyline. Um, so all the folks there have a nice view uh, just kind of over this building of the, um, of the skyline. A couple other things um, right behind here, there's a um, kind of a commissary kitchen. Uh, so food trucks can go there, unload, do their prep work. Um, and also folks can, there are even some condos so they can rent a kitchen or own a kitchen space, um, you know, for like ghost restaurants, delivery services, things like that. I'm not sure what's planned for this portion of that building. I think it's mostly office. Uh, this corner's restaurant, that's a coffee shop and co-working. On the corner is a dog bar, like all, all things dogs and alcohol. <laughs> um, Summit Seltzer. Summit Seltzer is There's here. Over there. And there's kind of a pocket of bungalow, a, a na pocket kind of neighborhood of bungalows um, on this side of town that this stuff is kind of servicing. This has been historically a pretty industrial neighborhood. There's a concrete plant, which is, um, I guess kind of that way. We'll ride, we'll past, ride it. past it. Yeah, that it's a just a big piece of land that's gonna be developed. Um, there aren't too many spots like that where there's a pretty big parcel yeah. left. But there is it. It is in a historically established neighborhood, so maybe a little slow leasing up. But it, I think these buildings have maybe been finished a year year and a half so a, a year about a year and a half ago our firm was looking for new office space and we scoped out lower tuck and it was a, a really strong option for us we were surprised to learn that it was popular enough that lease rates here were basically on par with lease rates in uptown <laughs> it must be doing well um, I'm assuming driven by all the restaurant coffee shop brewery proximity to the Greenway mm -hmm. but um, as a local resident, I'm also very psyched that this is now here and is another spot that we can go. And that restaurant <laughs> would primarily serve as tenants of the industrial park? No, it's going to be a destination. A destination. Mm -hmm. yeah, so sure. people will drive past to warehouse trucking to come to that restaurant? Okay. That's what they're hoping the for plan. sure. beer kegs by bicycle which is pretty cool um, and then this is Charlotte's first rezoning for a car free apartment building and so residents are not allowed to have cars they have to actually sign a contract that they will not have a car on premise or in the neighborhood because all the neighbors are worried that they were gonna have a car anyway and just park it in front of their house so um, we helped Cluck and the Spoke Easy together, the bike shop and the architecture firm, uh, helped with the rezoning. So we met with the neighborhoods, we told them the things that we were going to do here, and um, what you're seeing 
This is the height of the building or one more floor? That's the top. So that's the top of the building. What you're seeing in steel here is the bike room. And so uh, we are kind of standing pretty much right over here. So you see the balconies. This area in green is the bike facilities or are the bike facilities. So you have bike parking, which is enclosed inside as a part of the lobby. Okay. The same uh, basic racks that we saw at the first spot, but they do have a power assist and they drop down. Um, and then there's a maintenance stand with tools. There's a bike wash. And then the Spoke Easy has, has developed like a vending machine system. So there's uh, a vending machine there that'll have tubes and tire levers and the basics. So folks can do the basic stuff themselves. We will come in and service the machine. Uh, we're also working with them to have custom branded bikes. Uh, you know, cargo bike is, is one of the big things. Uh, uh, electric assist cargo bike allows you to go to groceries store and kind of pick up larger things. There's also kind of a, a, a lounge co-working area. And would that be available to the public, the lounge? No, that's just for the residents. All, all of this is just for the residents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about and, local bike nerds that live nearby? <laughs> uh, we could probably figure out a way to have a pass. But the cool thing about this, so every developer is paying 25000 to 35000 sure. mm -hmm. uh, per structured parking space. So when you go in a deck, every one of those spots, it's a lot of money. Yeah. And then that has to go into the rent, right? So one way that you can reduce the rent is take out the subsidizing a $30,000 storage unit for a car. Uh, so that's one of the ways that this was able to happen. Yeah, because there's a significant amount of lower income units in this. Yeah, significant meaning 30%? No. You just uh, lopped off I, the I garage cost and yeah. made the house affordable. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's closer to 60. So what would the rental price be here comparable to one that has parking You know, we don't know. It's being set by the developer, but uh, our discussion was that it would be hundreds of dollars less because of the the parking. Uh, yeah. Is it like if the market demand's there, are they, I mean... Could they jack up the rent? I mean, if, if people will pay? I mean, they're not mandated to keep it at a certain level. Uh, I'm not Within sure. The rezoning agreement, it was, uh, there, there were years tacked on, like, I think it may have been like 20 or something years. Oh, okay, that they had to stay at a certain level. Yeah. Because, because they're, they're receiving they're subsidies? subsidies? No. Uh, it, so this rezoning and uh, rezonings are changing a little bit in Charlotte, for sure, especially in the next week, but um, the neighborhoods have a lot of say. And so if a neighborhood doesn't want something and has opposition, it will be a challenge to, to build a building. So a part of this rezoning was uh, meeting with the neighbors, hearing their concerns, and making sure that the rezoning had those concerns in writing that we were going to stick to, right? That they were trust the neighborhood. It doesn't do us any good to present and then something doesn't happen that we told the neighborhood was going to happen. So. Um, we made sure to write it in and then follow through and not try to, you know, it's easy but, to... But no government subsidy is used for this development? That's my understanding. Yeah, it know. is a, um, is it an opportunity zone? Yes. It is an opportunity sure. zone, which is an overlay, so I don't know that that means there's any funding, but there's... But that there is I think incentive. they got additional there's incentives. density, right, for a including extra floor the something. affordable units gets you more height. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You talked to us about charging bicycles. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. Um, so what we're using now is a bike rack <laughs> that has power in it. So for e-bikes, there you have an outlet under the bike rack. It runs up through, and there's a plug right on the bike rack, and that's um, that's what we're using out and about um, the electric stations. Do you recall? Oh, yeah. So that's a photo of a, of a good e-bike parking. Uh, it's real simple. It just has a plug with a little, you know, cover over it for, for the elements. So this is what we use for e-bikes. 
um, a lot of projects like this will have a fleet of e-bikes as a part of the project so managing them you know we've seen other developers have a power strip and a bunch of plugs and that doesn't look nearly as nice as, as something like this so this project will own bikes that they can lease or rent or, or give to the tenants? Mm -hmm. It'll be kind of a, a program where, um, especially the cargo bikes, um, we even had a tiny electric car as a part of the project. Um, I'm not sure if that one's... Yeah, they were prototyped out, I think they were called like, uh, they were prototyped out of Raleigh-Durham and uh, you, you could like put two people inside of it. <laughs> take it on the highway, and, and but it was just a bike. It was a motorized e-bike. And <laughs> there is room for them, them to have it, um, but they were working through a few different companies. I think they're still planning to have at least one or two. How many, how many doors in the unit? Uh, I believe there's 160 units in here, and there's room for, like, in the, in the common area bike space, there's room for one bike per bedroom. And then in the end, in the in the units, there's also places for your bikes to be stored. Because some people, if you have really nice bikes, you don't want to put it in a communal place, mm -hmm. even if it is behind a lock mm -hmm. and, and center. Wow. Did you already say this? The name of the development is Cycle, C-Y-K-E-L? Mm -hmm. I don't think we said, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was Charlotte's first car-free rezoning. Yeah. Big deal. Yeah. And there is one other, which uh, the bike tour tomorrow will go to, of another car-free development. I think they're just the two um, in town right now. Car-free and 60% affordable. I mean, that was mm -hmm. big, big news when uh, when yeah. this this made it through. <laughs> and this doesn't have any retail. There's no mixed use. Um, we do have a, another project that I think Davin's on tour for tomorrow afternoon um, that... Uh, is a, another project that has an affordable retail space. We saw some speed bumps. You also saw some painted crosswalks that were done as a placemaking project through the Urban Design Center in the neighborhood. Um, this is a long straight stretch in between five points in that Savona Mill area and so I think traffic speeds were something that historically had been a concern there. And uh, there were some curb extensions and sidewalk that were built as a part of all that as well. Yeah, beautiful little flowers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Old yes. Yeah, if you didn't do that, it's like, why not make it beautiful, too? Yeah, absolutely. The only thing I would have probably done differently is to make them a little bit more active rain garden. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. Some green stormwater infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. All right. This is a little bit wonky through here, but it's the most direct way to go. And we'll pop back out in the street. Wait. Here we go. Let's hop in the bike lane here. I am. Yeah, I, I'm super lucky that I we're under contract to continue the planning and design of the Uptown Cycle Link, the, oh, re, the rest okay. of that network. So, so you're able to work locally. Yeah, we've got some really exciting stuff locally, and then um, projects elsewhere along the East Coast. This stretch here was actually a road diet. Oh, really? Yeah, the planted medians and bike lanes were all installed as a part of that.
I've been with Kittleson now for about a year and a half. Newness has worn off a little bit. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's a great, a great place to be. I... And how long were you with the city? Seven years. And what was the name of that uh, separated cycle track we were just on? The Uptown Cycle Link. That's the the Fifth Street segment of it. Uh, all together, it's about seven miles of street retrofit. All that is reallocated um, space. The project was a curb to curb project, so we didn't widen the street any. It was all reallocated. On this side of you is Romere Bearden Park. It's one of our signature center city parks. We've got four of them, one in each of the four wards of Uptown. Um, behind you is the um, Truist Field where the Charlotte Knights play. Uh, this was all developed as part of a um, county land swap. The county used to own this property, um, but wanted the park there. The Knights ended up having the ball field here. Um, it all worked out really well. And this is all, everything you see, including the skyscrapers that surround the park, were built in the last six or seven years. So this is a total transformation of this, this side of Uptown. Do I have that right, Kevin? Do you know the year of Romare Bearden Park? Um, I, I don't know the year off the top of the last head. five years, maybe, maybe five years ago. Okay. I brought in eight years ago and it was being built. Okay. So that's, that's about right then, if it was under construction eight years ago. That, I mean, these, these were not these were not here then. Uh, this is the museum district, and so this was all developed to be a very pedestrian-oriented festival street with paver uh -huh. treatments. Um, got active frontages there on the south side, and three of the major museums in town okay. all clustered right around this corner. So this is our last stop. Um, this is the Green, which is a, a private park. You're actually standing on top of a parking deck uh, that was developed when all of this was um, built around us. Um, I don't really have much to say now, except I wanted to take a moment to thank Kevin and, and Max and the rest of the tour guides. Dave, can we give them a round of applause? Um, and thank you all for coming any day that I get to spend um, riding around and getting paid for it is a really, really good day at work. So thank you all for making that happen. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.